Um, our next question is from Abir Mian, and the question reads, The fatwa against Salman Rushdie and the recent rioting about his knighthood is often questioned by non-Muslims. How do you think is the, uh, what do you think is the ideal way that a Muslim should respond to such an event? Uh, I am going to pass it on to Sheikh Faraz. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. This is a very good question because it is a, is a question that relates to the apparent fault line between Islam and the West, matters that are sacred to us, that that are not this, that are not open to criticism, let let alone attack or abuse to us as Muslims, and that are not so in the West, in Islam, and for Muslims, even those not practicing, the sacred is still sacred and therefore inviolable in the west it, in, and the, the west here is not necessarily a matter of location the the sacred like anything else is, is open for discussion is open for criticism and therefore these world these life attitudes can often collide and tensions arise thereby from both directions. People are shocked sometimes at our practice of Islam openly in society. Just one second. And at the same time, we are offended by some things that happen in the West. And one of these, for example, recently there was the was the, there was a Danish cartoon controversy now the issue of um, Salman Rushdie and his novel The Satanic Verses has come up again with, with his uh, knighthood now as Muslims we have to understand a few things right? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made our guidedness our being on the path of guidance contingent upon following the way of the Prophet Sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam Allah has said In tudi'uhu tahtadu If you obey him You shall be guided Right Laqad kana lakum fi rasulillahi uswatun hasana Liman kana yarju Allah wal yawm al-akhir Verily you have in the messenger of Allah The best of examples The most beautiful of examples For whoever seeks Allah And the last day okay? And so therefore anything that we're going to do and any way that we're going to react has to return to the prophetic way Imam Laqani interestingly towards the end of his work on Islamic beliefs Juharat al-Tawheed has this beautiful beautiful line he says وَكُنْ كَمَا كَانَا خِيَارُ الْخَلْقِ حَلِيفَ حِلْمٍ تَابِعًا لِلْحَقِّ be as the best of creation was always forbearant yet always following the truth, right? Be as the best of creation was, always forbearant, and always following the truth. What is forbearance? What is hilm? And halifa hilm, it's like we have a covenant with forbearance. We have an unwavering commitment to forbearance. What is forbearance? It is the capacity to restrain one's emotions and not to act on the basis of emotion particularly anger but rather to act on the basis of what reason of what revelation and reason entail what is hilm it is this capacity for restraint it is the able to restrain one's emotions and not to act on the basis of emotion such a, particularly anger which is the most destructive of emotion but rather to restrain these emotions and to, to respond to any situation in accordance with reason uh, to what reason and revelation entail okay. so, and this is from the excellence of one's submission right? that we do not that we are not subservient to these matters but our s s submission is to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala 
And then we have to understand that what is the purpose of the Sharia? The purpose of the Sharia is the promotion of good. Right? There's two central principles that all of the Sharia returns to. Jalb al-Musalih wa dar al-Mafasid The promotion of good and the warding off of harm. Okay? But the warding off of harm is in itself from the promotion and pres preservation of the good. So in situations where there's something wrong happening that we feel is wrong, it is a Muslim's duty to stop the wrong. But it is also our duty to, to stop the wrong in the right way. As Ibn Rajab and al hanbali and others mention, that it, one of the central aspects of good character is what? Is to respond to the good with that which is better, and to respond to the bad with nothing but the good. So one acts in the right way, when one acts by doing the right thing, but also in the right way. Okay? Now, when things happen that are offensive to us, we should try to do something. Right? But we have to consider what it is that we sh should be doing. What it is that we should be doing. Now, when, when the Danish cartoon controversy happened, all sorts of unacceptable actions took place from the Muslims. One of the problems in all of this was people made a lot of noise and got angry and upset. How many Muslims stopped and turned to those worthy of turning to, to the scholars, and asked them, what are we supposed to be doing? How are we supposed to respond to this? Okay, And let's see what... Um, can we, in order to see what you know, we're supposed to do in these circumstances, right? And one beautiful example, and we've given you the link here, and after this event, I would recommend each and every one of you to go and see Habib Ali al-Jifri, who, mashallah, agreed to offer courses through Sunni Path, and he's one of these radiant lights of guidance in our time. Someone who, when you look at him, before he even says a word, you're reminded of the Prophet sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam. And when you hear him speak, even if you don't understand Arabic, you you're moved because he reminds you of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. When you listen to what he has to say, it reminds you of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. What did he do? And with the consensus of so, with the agreement of so many scholars, he went in person. Right? They, they conducted a series of programs. Because he, he said that the problem in with this issue of the Danish cartoons is a bigger problem of lack of understanding between Islam and the West. They had a series of press conferences. Sheikh Yini, Habib Ali and other scholars, including but not only Sheikh Muhammad Said Ramadan al Buti and and the the the, the, the Egyptian Da'i um, Amr Khalid and others in different locations had other scholars coming in explaining why the Muslims took offense to this and opening the doors of dialogue on, on this matter so that others could appreciate why Muslims find this offensive because to the Western mind it's weird why do we take offense to this are we so insecure in our faith that we would take offense right so we need to communicate to them why Muslims